Hello and welcome to another demonstrational video here at MB's Most Homes. This time it's a 2017 Corrado T448. Uh, so we'll do the usual thing and start by going around the outside and then we'll move on to the inside. So first things first, if we open this door here, to open the bonnet, it's this catch here, so you just pull that down. That releases the bonnet and then it can be opened from the front. I'll show you that in a second, but while we're here, uh, underneath the passenger seat is the charger unit and there's also some fuses on the front of there. They are labelled, but they're also shown in the instruction manual. So that's where the 12 volt fuses for the motorhome are housed as well as uh, the charger unit. So that just clips back on like so. On this pillar here, there is an indication about tyre pressures. Uh, you're actually better referring to the tyres themselves as well as this um, because sometimes if they use specialist tyres, uh, obviously manufacturers of tyres vary regarding their pressures but the recommended pressures are shown here. It will also show you on the tyre as well. Most motorhomes use specialist camper tyres and they've got reinforced sidewalls and are capable of containing higher pressures. This customer has asked us to fit a tracker and the tracker unit is just the box for the tracker is here um, and there's an instruction manual also for the entertainment unit if you want to house your phone on these models you do so by lifting this up like so open up the side uh, locking mechanism like that put your phone into the bottom tray the bottom of your phone the top is sprung loaded like so and then if you press the lock button that'll hold your phone into position put that back you just clip them all together making sure that that's um, pressed back in so that it doesn't get damaged when you put the housing down okay so on to the bonnet underneath the bonnet then so we've already undone it to undo it fully you just reach for the clip inside and open the bonnet okay so with the bonnet retention catch in place there underneath here we have washer fluid and um, we've got the coolant, brake fluid reservoir, engine oil fill, and then there's a dipstick there to show you your uh, oil levels. If you ever need to jump start the vehicle, then the positive um, or red cable goes onto that metal tab, which is just, just there. Okay, so your red cable, positive onto there, and your black cable or earth goes onto this nodule here. So that's if you ever need to jump start this vehicle, or jump start another vehicle from it. We've got the chassis plate here. And I think that concludes everything for underneath the bonnet. Okay, so I'll move on around the outside, uh, just showing you all the controls. The fuel fill for this model is just here by the passenger's door. Uh, so it's a key, you do need the key for that uh, into uh, the lockable, so the, you need the Fiat key into there uh, to fill your fuel. Okay, so uh, to fill the motor with water, so to fill the onboard tank, which I think is 120 litres, uh, to do that, you just put a hose pipe into this here. So don't confuse this with fuel, obviously, for obvious reasons. And again, it needs the key in there to be unlocked to fill it full of water. So what you need to do with that is turn the key, firstly support the outer ring, and then when you, when you, it's actually unlocked now, so when you've unlocked it, just push it in and turn it. Okay, so just put a hose pipe into there until literally water pours back the other way. And then you know that your fresh water tank is full. Okay, to push it back in, you press it in and turn it and then lock. Okay, so that's your fresh water. The wastewater, so everything that goes down the bathroom sink, the kitchen sink and the shower ends up in a tank underneath the motorhome. And to drain that down, uh, you, this little key, this metal key is required. Okay, so to do that, it locates onto this spindle here. So this metal key goes onto the spindle like so. And then this pipe here is where the wastewater drains from. Okay, so you just give this a turn. Okay, so it's just a quarter of a turn on this key here. I think clockwise, uh, 
there's, there's no water in it so I can't get any water flowing but uh, clockwise is locking it and uh, anti-clockwise releases the water and that's where the, the waste water comes out from. Okay so there's an indication on the control panel inside to tell you both about your fresh water and your waste water levels but we'll, we'll come to that when we when we go inside. Okay, uh, the fridge location is directly behind these two vents here. Okay, so what it does is it draws cool air in at the bottom, expels warm air at the top, and that's the reason that those vents are there. Just be careful if you're ever power washing the vehicle, uh, don't spray up into these vents. They're designed uh, so that water can flow over the top of them, but if, if you spray water up into those, uh, it's, it's a, you're going to actually get water inside the motor and behind the fridge. This is the vent for the boiler, so this is where it exhausts uh, its gas fumes. So in cold weather, it's usual to see steam rising from this. It's not a problem, it's just where the uh, gas boiler is venting its exhaust. So a bit like your domestic boiler at home, you'll see steam being expelled from those. This is access to the rear garage locker area. Okay. So in there we've got the carpets rolled up, there's a ladder for the bed which we'll come to when we go inside. Um, so yeah, just access to the garage. There's also these tie, tie down points, you can actually turn those slightly and it'll allow you to adjust the position of those and then if you turn them again uh, it tightens them up. Okay so this model's been fitted with a bike rack. To operate the bike rack you undo these catches here and then this frame with these arms on it folds down flat okay and then the bikes are positioned on these rails so the wheels go onto those rails like so and then these bars here are pulled down and then they secure onto the crossbar or the upright seat post of the bike to keep them in position okay so that's how it looks when the uh, bike rack is, is down so the wheels sit into here and then these bars come across um, I'll show you on this one and then they fix uh, the bikes either crossbar or upright seat post in to position. So I'm around the other side of the motorhome here we're on the opposite side to the garage access. There's some further bike posts in here so obviously it's a four bike uh, rack so the, the longer one obviously is for the outside bike, the shortest one which I showed you is for the inside bike. These straps can be put over the wheels to keep the uh, wheels in position when they're sitting on the rails. So as mentioned we've got carpets um, the ladder for the bed this is the awning winder there is a separate video on how to operate the awnings on our YouTube channel uh, and I'll try and remember to uh, put that video uh, in the description or in with the email that I sent to this customer in here there's a light uh, which is switched on the light itself and we've got a mains supply as well uh, it's also heated so the vent which is just there that's uh, expels warm air into the garage so it's heated if you've got wet boots or wet clothes in there it can uh, help to heat and dry them out okay so this one here is where the main supply comes into the motorhome so I don't think this has actually got a cable with it um, but that's where the main main supply for the motorhome comes in so if you're going to use mains appliances inside the motorhome it's got to be plugged in and also that will switch the um, battery charger on to charge the 12 volt battery okay so um, it's a simple plug-in um, so you just get the cable and push it onto the terminals there okay next one along is the toilet cassette this is where all the toilet waste ends up there's an indication on the inside in the toilet area to tell you when that's full uh, but it so uh, you can actually see into the toilet to see how full that is but I'll come to that when we go inside <clears throat> so to open this up you need to press both sides in <clears throat> at the same time and then <clears throat> the toilet cassette is housed just in here uh, to get that out what you do is you lift up that little tab underneath there slide this out and then in theory then this would be full of toilet waste to empty it you slide the nozzle forward unscrew the cap off the end like so and with the cap off the end turn the whole cassette upside down and pour the waste away as you can see there it's going to pour out of the nozzle as you're doing so press this button here it lets air in as the liquid is flowing out of the other end 
uh, and stops it splashing and glugging. Once you've emptied it, what I tend to do then is fill it full of water, rinse it out, and uh, so yeah, fill it, fill it full of water again by sliding that back, opening up this catch here, and then you've got access into there. So fill it full of water again to the full, give it a shake and a rinse, and then uh, rinse it out again, get rid of all the water, and then it's ready to be used again. So you need to put a little bit of chemical the required amount of chemical into the bottom here and just line the bottom with a little bit of water. There's a measuring nozzle on the end that when you take that uh, cap off the end, it's actually a measuring cup so you can measure out the toilet chemical. You can also use sachets, so one sachet uh, gives you the required amount of chemical. Okay, so before you put this in, just make sure that that's back straight. The nozzle is back in and the cover is slid into position. Uh, and then just slide this back into its housing like so Next to that we've got the gas so the gas locker uh, this will uh, take two gas bottles Okay, yeah, so two gas bottles into here these retraining restraining straps keep the bottles in position There's a pressure regulator just here. You can actually switch the gas supply off via that uh, handle there uh, it will require a flexible hose that screws onto this here that flexible hose then comes off uh, and goes onto the bottle itself and then there's a tap on top of the bottle which will uh, switch the actual gas on and off but as I said you can actually do it uh, via that tap as well. This regulates the pressure so there's no need for a separate regulator so that regulates the pressure from the high pressure bottles going into the motorhome. Okay we're inside the motorhome now um, I'll just run through it from front to back to swivel the captain's chairs around uh, it's these little nozzles here these tabs so if you just push that forward you know, and then push on the seat it'll allow you to swivel the chairs around exactly the same on that side and that's how you get your captain's chair swiveled okay so we've got the instruction manuals in here in this white pack uh, I'll leave that inside the motorhome so just put that there for now we have a table here, it's a removable table, uh, it actually can form another lower bed here, although this uh, could, in theory, sleep six, it's only got four seat belts. So your seat belts are behind here, one, two, three, four seat belts. And there's a retractable bed above, which we'll come to in a second, but this lower section, this diner area here, can actually be made into a bed. You do that by taking the table off its mountings, and you can see there's an elbow joint on this table leg. So um, you press that button in, it'll allow you to fold the leg up. You can imagine if this table then is sitting on its lower rail, which is just there, this table then bridges the gap in this area here. There's also an extension for the table. Underneath it, there's like a, a rail that runs, this rail just here. Uh, and you can see that, that extends, it's like a telescopic rail. And then that section sits into the exposed uh, blank area to give you an extension on the table so that it comes further out into this area. To take the table off what you need to do is lift it up like like so and then lift the whole thing off its rail at the at the other end. So lift it first like this, angle it okay so that the legs off the ground and then lift it off the rail. Okay so that's the table in the lower position I think what you actually do with this is you put this uh, on top this cushion here on top of the table and that forms uh, the base for the bed and then this section here just slides out okay so you slide that up to there like so uh, and again I think what you do then is put this one flat on top of there and use that one uh, to sit flat as well and then that forms the bed here okay so we're still in the dinette area here what I've done is I've taken all the cushions off and underneath here, that's where the uh, freshwater tank is housed. So you can see where I showed you how to fill it on the outside, that pipe just runs into the tank. Very, very important that you drain this down, in, uh, especially in freezing conditions. Uh, whenever you're not using it really, you just need to get the water out of the tank. You don't want what stagnant water sitting in the tank. Okay, so to do that, there's a wheel on top of the tank here. And if you turn that clockwise, that closes the valve and will retain all the water in the tank. 
okay so there's no point filling the tank up unless you know that that is closed otherwise it'll just pour onto the floor underneath just do it finger tight don't over tighten it you'll damage the mechanism so when it's just finger tight it's closed and then to open it just turn it until you hear a click which it's just done there that will actually drain the water down to 20 litres within the tank so it allows you to calculate your weights more accurately but if you're not bothered, so bothered about that and you just want to drain it fully then just open up the valve fully don't um, you know continuously turn it it'll come out of its thread so once you've heard it click maybe just give it a turn and a half further past its click and then that tank then is uh, is fully open and it will drain all the water from the tank so i'm going to close that so that it's ready to use again because uh, we haven't got the freezing conditions here there's access into the tank here so if you just simply open up this if you ever needed to sanitize the tank you can use milton or special uh, san uh, sanitizing powders that you put into there rinse the tank through and make sure that it's all drained out and ready to use again if you, if you do remove that make sure that this is properly tight um, because when you fill up the tank what will happen is the water will get to the top and it tries to push its way past this seal that's on here so if you fill up the tank and that's pouring out of the top obviously it'll, it'll end up in your motor home so just make sure that that's fully tight okay Okay, moving on uh, further towards the back of the motorhome. This bed is a retractable bed. You can put it back up with bedding on it. Uh, to get this down, you push this lever across like so, and pull on the handle, and then the bed, uh, that exposes the bed. And as I said, the ladder clips onto uh, here, and then that gains you access into this bed here. Okay, so to put it back up again, push this lever and just push back up you'll hear it click into position uh, yeah it'll go back up with, with bedding on it okay above the main entrance door we have the control panel okay so basically to switch the whole vehicle on and off the 12 volt system is that button there okay that will indicate whether you've got a main supply coming in we haven't at the moment so it's not illuminated this here will tell you about your leisure battery condition Okay, so if you press that button there, you can see that some lights have illuminated. So we're at 12.7 volts, which is pretty good considering we're not plugged in. That's your fresh water tank situation. Okay, so um, th there's actually no water in it. Sometimes they can just pick up um, residue in, in the bottom of the tank. And that is your waste water level. Okay, so it gives you a quick fix on your uh, water levels. We've got the step switch just down here, okay, so that operates the step electrically, like so. And there's some light switches just there as well. Okay, um, here we have some taps. Uh, you don't need to touch these really, they are to just isolate the individual gas appliances, okay? So, shouldn't really need to do anything with those at all. Okay, so in here, when you first fill up your water tank, it's very important that you push all the air out of the pipe work that's in the motor. So you're filling up that tank, which is just under there. You need to switch the pump on and pump all the water through the motor until eventually you get a pure flow of water coming out of your tap. So you do that by opening up your tap onto the hot. And there's no water in it now, so I'm not getting any water through. But if you open that up, you, you'll get a spluttering out of your tap uh, it's important that you do it on the hot side first because what that does is it fills up the boiler so there's no point switching your boiler on until you've purged all the air out of the system if you switch your boiler on without doing that step you're basically heating thin air in your tank in your in your boiler okay so um, it's very important that you do that and you do it just by waiting until you get the pure flow of water coming out on the hot side Okay, and then you can switch your boiler on. If you switch your boiler on before that, uh, you are in danger of overheating the boiler because it's just trying to heat thin air with no water in it. Hob, straightforward, there's nothing I can say about that, and you've got an oven and grill underneath. Uh, we've got some main sockets here and a 12 volt socket. So that's the 12 volt socket, and that's the main socket. Fridge, um, 
Okay, so this is a three-way fridge. To switch it on, press this button here. Okay, so it's all lit up. Uh, to select your fuel type, you do that by pressing this button here. Okay, so we've got mains electric, will run perfectly well and efficiently on mains electric. The picture of the battery is 12 volt, that will only work when the engine is running. It's for transit cooling and will only uh, keep the fridge cold. It's uh, not very efficient, it will only sort of keep it running while you're in transit. You need to get it cold first before putting it on that. And then gas, again, very efficient on gas, it will run. Um, you know, if you're not, if you haven't got a main supply coming into the motor, switch it to gas and it will run perfectly well when you're off grid. The other function on here is a auto so that will automatically select the most relevant power source so it'll try and find electric first then it'll try and find gas then it'll try and find 12 volts the reason for that is that if you forget to switch it from gas to electric to 12 volts you know if you're moving around and um, then the fridge is likely to start warming up and it won't be um, cooling you have got a temperature adjustment here on a hot day like today you probably want the fridge to work a bit harder, so on full. Uh, on a really cold day, um, if you put it on full, it'll just ice up. So um, this is sort of relevant to the ambient temperature outside. There is an instruction manual on this, uh, which explains about the settings. This has gone to fail at the moment because we haven't got any power coming in. So if you see this um, being displayed here, make sure that you're plugged in or you've got gas or the engine is running. Uh, if it does that, you need to switch it off and then switch it back on and start the process again. Okay, the fridge is opened via that catch just there. If you are leaving the Motom laid up for any length of time, don't leave the fridge door closed. Um, it will um, get stagnant air building up in the fridge and it'll start to smell. So this little catch that's just here, if you place that little catch in that hook there, it just leaves the door slightly ajar and uh, lets the fridge breathe and fresh air circulate around it. Exactly the same on that side. Okay, above that we have um, the controls for the satellite dish. We don't actually guarantee satellite dishes, but I think this has been factory fitted. When I, when I switched it on, the satellite will actually lock onto the uh, English satellite, so it's, it's actually done it. Then you just switch it on, or off by the on off button there that allows you to select the satellite but i think this has already been pre-programmed for the relevant one for the uk so i'm going to switch that off i don't know if you can hear that but it's showing that the satellite uh, is retracting okay so it's got its own motors and it will retract itself okay so that's how you operate that the um television uh, is opened by pressing that lever to one side slide this back obviously this is designed to take a flat screen tv so slide this back pull this toggle here and then the tv is mounted onto these brackets here okay and then it'll allow you to swivel it and then the tv sits in like so this is on the end of here has got the um satellite aerial so that's the feed for the signal uh, from the satellite and then it's got a 12 volt cable as well if you wanted to fit a 12 volt television okay bathroom um, on this model <coughs> the toilet will swivel okay so to use the toilet swivel it around to the angle you need open the lid up um, slide this just at the side there you can probably see that lever what that does is it opens and closes the valve which i showed you that that's actually directly connected to the cassette so you open open that up use the toilet press the flush button which is that green uh, blue button there uh, if the toilet cassette is full a little light illuminates there that's just a heater nozzle so the heating comes through to there uh, when you're traveling around and the, you've got toilet waste in the cassette obviously make sure that that blade is closed otherwise you'll get it swilling around and maybe spilling over into the motor on which you do not want okay so the light switch for the bathroom is just here the sink uh, 
I sort of say the, the, the sink folds away to give you access to the shower and uh, reveals the shower head. Uh, and then on this side, when you're in the motorhome, when you're in the shower, sorry, uh, this uh, also retracts onto the door. So you can see when you're inside, this bit here goes onto there. Uh, so it, it completely isolates the toilet and gives you a waterproof shower cubicle. There's a drying rail here if you want to hang clothes, wet coats and things in there. Obviously it'll drain down into the uh, drain for the uh, for the shower. Okay, the bed, you can actually make this into one large bed just by pulling this section down. Obviously it's got uh, cushions there which will um, fill, fill the gap. The boiler on this model is housed in this wardrobe here. Okay, so that's where the boiler is. Again, another very important thing is to drain this down. Probably the most important thing. So if water is left in here and it freezes, uh, it'll expand inside the boiler and it'll end up cracking the uh, the boiler and all the associated pipe works, which you can see here. The drain for that is this here. Okay, so that is now in the open position. To close it, you turn that diamond shaped nozzle around so it's in that position and press the button in on the front. This has a thermostatic sensor in it so it will sense the temperature. If the temperature reaches 6 degrees or below it will automatically drop all the water out of the boiler. It will only do that if the boiler is switched off. So it's a, it's a safety feature for the boiler. When the boiler's in use and it's sensing that you're, well, it, the, when the boiler's switched on basically, it won't drain all the water out. Okay, so if you are struggling to get water, hot water through your taps, that's probably the first thing that you need to check. So to close it, sorry, to open it manually so that all the water flows out onto the, underneath of the motor onto the floor, you just turn that around and it'll flip out that button as well. I'm going to close that for now because we haven't got uh, dangerously low temperatures. Okay, so that's the thermostat, thermostatic close valve for the boiler. The boiler controls are here. Okay, right. So the way this works is you can select your power source via this uh, dial here. So in the middle, it's just gas. You can see there's a little nodule there. So that's just gas. One kilowatt of electric, two kilowatts of electric. So you're selecting the power source that you want the heating and the hot water to run on. Okay, so back to the middle on gas. Gas and electric on one kilowatt. Gas and electric on two kilowatts. Okay, so that's just selecting your power source. This side here is selecting how you want it to be heated. Okay, so the two upper ones are 40 degree water only. So think of those as summer settings. So you probably only want just hot water in summer. You don't want to heat the motor home. So 40 degree only, water only. 60 degree water only. Off. Heating only. Okay, so you're just heating the motor on with no hot water and then heating and hot water on 60 degrees. Okay, so this one selects your fuel, this one selects how you want it to be heated. Um, okay, and then your temperature control for the motorhome is this dial here. So if you've got it round here, you can probably see the five. If you take it back round to the one, then that's the, the lowest setting and you're lining it up with this zero here. You can maybe see that there's a green light illuminated here and an orange light here. The orange light means that the water is being heated but isn't hot yet. When that goes out, the water is hot. The green light means the boiler is operational and functioning. In a second, we'll get a red light uh, within this here. I know it's difficult to see with the phone, but in a second, the red light will appear. It means that the boiler has failed to ignite. It's done that because We've no gas and we've no electric. Um, so if you see that red light appear, it means that the boiler has failed. It, it won't reignite. So what you have to do then is switch it off, wait 20 seconds, 
and then start the process again. When you first connect to gas, it's going to take a while for the gas from the bottles to reach the boiler, which is in here. It's got to go through all the pipe work and eventually reach the boiler and ignite. So if you're using it on gas, you might find you have to do this on and off process three or four times until the green light stays illuminated and there's no red light. You can actually hear it ignite if you listen carefully. Um, but again, there is instruction manuals for this, but I um, hope I've explained that in uh, an understandable fashion. Um, so yeah, you, you're just looking for the lights there basically. If, if a red light appears, you've got to switch it off and start the process again. There are two ladders. There's a ladder here. I think that's the longer one that's used for the front bed. And then the ladder in the garage, I think, is for this, uh, this, this bed here if you extend that section out. Okay, that concludes the instructional video on this particular model. Um, please like and share the videos if you want to uh, receive more videos and also videos on uh, stock that we've got arriving. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, it'll uh, automatically alert you to those videos because we do film a video for every every vehicle that we've got coming in i uh, hope that explains everything and uh, we look forward to seeing you when you collect your new motorhome i'll be happy to answer any questions between now and that time or i can answer any questions if you make a list uh, on the happy day that you collect this lovely new corrado motorhome